Well, New South Wales Supreme Court Judge Ian Harrison has come under fire this week after hitting out at an MP who dared to air his opposition to the voice to Parliament. Nationals MP Pat Conaghan spoke against the referendum, as is his right, and said he was astounded to receive an email which described his speech as disgusting. Joining us live on the desk is the Australian's legal affairs columnist and vice president of the Rule of Law Institute, Chris Merritt. Always great to see you, Chris. So, uh, you know, where are the people screaming for this uh, judge to be uh, punted? Because, I mean, you can't have a justice coming out, a Supreme Court justice coming out, telling not only a citizen but a member of parliament that their, their free thinking, their thoughts are disgusting and racist. Look, there's a number of things that are really surprising about this. The first one is that he did it. The second one is that it's full of spelling errors, <laughs> full of grammatical errors. And Mr Harrison, according to my informants, is a, a stickler for proper English usage. But the real concern, I find, is the, the response of the Chief Justice of New South Wales. Uh, it's been portrayed as chipping um, or, or uh, disciplining Ticking Justice Harry, yeah, but it's not at all. And now, to get it exactly right, I've brought the exact words along, and this is what he said. It's generally prudent for judges to avoid making public statements on topics of political or public controversy. Justice Harrison's email to Mr Conaghan was not a public statement, nor intended for public consumption. Now, I don't read that as criticism at all. In fact, <laughs> I, I'm surprised. It's a defence. I, I, I was so surprised by that. I checked. This is out of the Australian. I checked it with the Financial Review. That's it. And exactly the same That's statement appeared in the Fin Review. Yep. So somewhere along the line, I hope, is the last paragraph that was somehow deleted. And it said, hopefully, it would have said, but in this case, even a private email correspondent but, but should this, not take place. This, this was presented by, as you said, Financial Review, the Oz, across the board as a ticking off, the Chief Justice ticking off Harrison mm. for this imprudent, I would call bizarre, email. Could there be a briefing or some reason why the media interpreted what you just read as the Chief Justice ticking off a Supreme Court justice? Possibly, but let's look at the exact words of what the Chief Justice yeah. said. And it's not criticism of Justice Harrison at all. The reality, the only way you can read the exact quotes of what the Chief Justice said is that private um, denunciations of a politician are quite OK. Now, just turn that around for a little bit and try and imagine the situation if a politician intervened privately in the work of a judge. <laughs> it would be scandalous. Absolutely, James. But, Chris, I mean, New South Wales has a minister for treaty as well as Aboriginal affairs. Um, the New South Wales government has decided that it's going down the treaty route itself beyond, you know, whatever happens with the Uluru Statement and the voice. All of these things will obviously wind up being litigated at some point. Doesn't this undermine everybody's confidence? I mean, this is the real big thing here. Because these very contentious issues are going to have to go before the bench at some point, that's almost without a doubt, how can people be confident that the courts are not stacked in the favour of this particular agenda? Look, the, the most cautious way of describing this is that Justice Harrison has exposed himself to the risk of an application for recusal, for him to stand aside, not just on matters to do with Mr Conaghan, but he criticised the National Party policy and he said it was niggardly and shameful. So I, I think anybody associated with the National Party or anybody associated mm -hmm. with the no vote, no vote in this coming referendum would have grounds to apply for Justice Harrison not to sit on cases involving them. Absolutely. Now, that, that's a, but that, that could be more than half the people, you know. <laughs> almost half, yeah. almost half. Yeah. Well, but, that's but it quite is right. Because when you look at the speech that the Nationals MP made here, uh, Pat C C Cunahan, it was very much a measured speech. There was nothing in there that yeah. would trigger this sort of a response, mm. even if you're very pro-voice and passionate about it. So... He, he characterised his views as disgusting, paternalistic, racist. Mm. So if you are someone who's going to vote no, 
you wouldn't feel confident that this justice is perhaps going to give you a fair hearing if he is so adamant about something. That, uh, to me, it's bizarre. It's bizarre reaction Chris, to what was a very vicious speech. This is all spelled out in the bench books of the New South Wales Judicial Commission, which provide guidance for judges on how to avoid these problems. Mm. You've got to stay out of these political disputes. You should play no part in it at all. There we go. Chris Merritt, thanks so much always for chatting to us here on Outsiders on a Sunday morning. Thanks so much.